This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, I'm Glenn Martinez of Olamata Gardens, and this is Ms. Natalie Cash, our farm manager at Olamata Gardens. Aloha. Yeah. Hi. So we're going on a trip today, right? Yes, we Where's did. our travel log to today? Well, we went over to the Philippines, uh -huh. and we went to the island of um, the city of Bac Bacolod. Bacolod. Yeah. Bacolod. Yeah. Yeah. And what, Negros, Negros, right? Negros, Negros. Negros. So we flew into Manila, An island, right? Yep. And we went with uh, John. John and Danny and the Consuelos Foundation. Yeah. Now, Consuelo they, Foundation is a local charity here, right? Yes, they are. Yeah. For here yeah. and Philippines. Right. So local. they spent about a third of their money in Hawaii and about yes. two thirds in the Philippines. Yeah. And so John was uh, the boss at that time. He was the CEO of Consuelo Foundation. He's no longer with them right now. But he was a wonderful CEO for yes. us. And uh, Dr. Benny Ron Dr. from Benny University Ron. of Hawaii hooked us up with him. He sure did. And they funded multiple trips to the Philippines. Yes. And one of the most delightful ones was we flew into Manila, and then we spent a, a day or two there, and then they hopped on a small plane at 5 in the morning mm -hmm. and flew about an hour, hour and a half, you know, basically going to the big island, a little bit longer than that. And we landed at a small uh, island airport, yes. and we went to New York, and we went to... Um, uh, what's the name of the place? Well, Welcome Home Foundation. Welcome Home Foundation. How is that? And huh? it's a home and it's a foundation for the deaf um, right. students there. Yep, deaf and dumb, right? They have a place to yep. stay, learn skills, yeah. and be part of the mm -hmm. community. Yeah. So yeah. we go there. They look very young. It's, there's so many Oriental people. They just look so young for so long. You know, I'm not yeah. jealous. I'm not <laughs> jealous. But they, they, the, the students that we work with were actually 18 to 24 years yes, old. They, were. they had actually graduated high school and they were there for job placement. So here is Welcome Home Foundation, the literacy program and skills training. So they get out of high school and bingo, here they go. So this is where John and I flew into, and. Uh, there it is. We landed at the airport. We're in, we were in a good Glenn spirit here. Glenn is always here. funny. Yeah. And uh, so we're happy to be there. We're in our Mad Hot Steams t-shirts here. Yeah. And this, this is one of the young ladies that teaches here at that Lord school. My Lord is. And She's John just seems to know everybody in the Philippines associated with it in yes. Buffalo. And uh, this was like basically two house lots where they removed the houses and turned it into a farm right on the edge of the city. Yes. And the, the campus for this deaf school is right next door. Mm -hmm. So as you pull up on the right hand side is this garden. And you can see there uh, the, the diverse group that we had. Of course it was a challenge because most of them were deaf. And so I had to learn sign language. And they had a lady there, the lady in yellow there, she was my sign Agnes. language person. Mm -hmm. hmm? Agnes. Agnes. They had a yep. wonderful job in that. And this was really Frenchy. great. The Consuelo yeah, I founded this. I was able to go there for a couple of days and work with them. And there's the lady in the straw hat. Yeah, that's that's Agnes. Sorry. That's Agnes. Angie is the, Angie is the lady, lady in, in yellow. yellow. Agnes, yes. her mother started this yes. school. 13 and she, years. Yeah, she was literally years. raised up in the school and yes. juggling hand to mouth. And Consuelo Foundation discovered them yes. and embraced them and funded yes. a lot of their efforts. Yes. You know, they? So it's really quite interesting to go there. And, uh, and to see what they can bring up. And yeah. uh, so we'll show you some slides of the gardens of what we built there to make it unique. Before I got there, Danny had uh, taken my plants and he had a, a contractor there, donated his time and did it at cost. They built these cement tanks, they did the plywood on top, they drilled the holes, they had the plants going. You see my signature bucket there, the white bucket, that's called a, 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 a bucket siphon. Mm -hmm. And we had done a trip earlier and taught them how to do it. Mm -hmm. they, obviously, they learned very well. They mm -hmm. got them up and going. And then the background is the garden. Now, this is the tank they put in. It's a cement side tank. It's only about two inches thick, remarkably. And that thing is three feet up and three feet down. So it's actually like five or six feet deep. And you see the water coming back trickles in. Now, you see the well in the back? When Natalie and I got there, they would spin that wheel, and it has a rope. So you see there's two blue pipes, one on either side? Well, the rope goes around the wheel, it goes down in the ground, and then comes back up. And when you do it, the water comes out in the blue pipe. Yeah. When we got there, they were filling up a five-gallon bucket yes. of water and carrying it over here. They sure were. And Natalie got tired of that real fast. Because... <laughs> 
So she put in that blue pipe, and so they fill it directly. There's Danny. So see our double tray there, the top on the right, mm -hmm. so that it drains all the way. And there's Danny. He is a wonderful guy there. He was just up here in Honolulu doing a fundraising for some charity work that he did. Mm -hmm. But they welded all these tables together, and we put them together, and we got it operational, right? And every trip has gotten bigger yes, and bigger. they sure did. Now, on this trip, what we wanted to do was take that fish water and put it into one of my airlifts, yeah. pump it up to 9 or 10 feet yeah. high, so they would then have pressurized water on the farm. Because the girls, these little deaf girls and boys, they were dipping the water up in the tray there and hand carrying it over and ladling it up mm -hmm. and pouring it on each loving plant. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a beautiful when you take pictures of people dipping tea leaves in and shaking the water mm -hmm. over the plant. But boy, it took them all day to water. So yeah. what we did, we set up this aquaponic system. They stocked the tank with tilapia fish. My aquaponic system, what it does is it turns, we do grow some plants in it, yeah. but you see the garden around us and the ground is much bigger. What we do is turn this ammonia water into what, Natalie? Nitrogen. That's right, nitrogen Nutrients. the plants can do, nutrient rich, right. So most places we go to, they overstock their tanks. What we do here is every afternoon, they fill the tank all the way full to that yeah. top level you see there. They run it all night through the stone. The stones and the bacteria, nitrifying bacteria, turn the ammonia water into nitrogen. And then, in the morning, they take the water and go out. Now, here we are there digging a hole. There goes your well. Yep. With a your hole. hole with, with and they're well. going down. They had to dig me a hole about six feet deep. With a little ladle. Yeah. You see that? <laughs> that is just a pose. And as they welded on the head of a hoe, they would drop it, turn it a quarter town, fill it full of dirt, and pull it up. They, sure they did that till they had that thing about five or six feet deep for me. Kind yeah, of sure. amazing, you know? <laughs> Me, I want a post hole digger or something like that, right? But yeah. they, they drop it in there and they turned it. Now, the funny story is, when we got all done and we dropped the pipe in the middle of it, oh, that's it knocked up. off the cap on the bottom and the water oh, yeah, came up and up around. Too. And we had to take the whole thing out and glue the cap on. One little mistake. This is your pipe and in a pipe. these guys laughed about it. Here we were on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> they were. We were done. They were happy and campers. And we dropped this thing in, and no all of a sudden water what, comes up all over our feet. And we go, oh, no, we knocked off the cap there on the goes. bottom. So here we are standing this thing. Now, this thing is about 12, 15 feet tall. It's going to go down in the ground and then pump the water up. So you see the air hose there. So it's all together, and they drop it in. And uh, this was so remarkable because after this, they don't have to carry five-gallon buckets of water around anymore. They have hoses and water faucets out there with the nutrient fish water in it. So all of this is made out of local materials, right? Yes, it is. Okay. First time we brought them to the Philippines, right? And mm -hmm. we showed them how to do it. Yeah. And then Danny took us on a shopping trip. Consuelo yeah. bought all the material yes. for us. And we were able to build it out of their local material that water. and put it in. And that's where the boo-boo happened when we got all done. And then when I dropped the pipe in, it pushed down on the cap. It came off and the water came up all around our feet. We said, wow, we hit a spring. Uh-oh. Yeah. So we had to take it, take all, it apart, all apart, do the whole thing all over. It took about an hour or so. And it, it, <laughs> it's amazing that they had a sense of humor about they it. Did. You know, you they would have did. thought it would have been fired right on the spot. They well, weren't we angry or time. nothing. They just That's were right. happy to do whatever they needed yeah. to to get yeah. it running because they yeah. were excited. Yeah, yeah. And we were supposed to stop off at the equivalent of a Costco or Walmart type store in the city. And we were supposed to get bags of candy and yeah. throw it at these kids. Now, but yeah. these kids are 18 years old and older, mm -hmm. but I guess all over the world everybody likes chocolate. Yeah. Well, we didn't do it. We forgot yeah. the chocolate. We get there. Oh, wow. The whole reward system is going down yes. the tubes, yeah. right? So. <laughs> But I, I was where amply, you know, uh, paid to go on this trip and that, and you know, in American dollars, right, which convert very handsomely in the Philippine money. And so we ran down to an ATM machine, and we got a whole lot of twenty-dollar bills, yes, right? Did. Right. Yeah. I think their twenty-dollar bill was like two dollars to us. But we took the twenty-dollar bills and we put them up on the paper clips and on the uh, clothesline. Reward. And reward. So everybody went home with money. They okay? were happy campers. I will remember the chocolate next time, but <laughs> they, they, they kind of like our reward system there. They were happy. And they got it right. Every time somebody did something good or smart, it was instantaneous reward. 
in that. And in fact, is the day after this, after about three days of this thing, four days, we stopped off on the way back after the airport and passed out envelopes to everybody yeah. and pretty much gave away our paychecks. You know, that was that. But they it was sort of a break even man. working vacation. But they were the spirit of them was yeah. so high and it was so infectious for what they did. Even though we couldn't speak their language. That's right. Or they couldn't understand what we were saying, but sign language um, teachers was able to teach. That's tell right. them what we were talking about. And they had a signer that could keep up with my mouth. You sure was. And then I started making up my own little things, you know, worms <laughs> and my own little hand signs as to what we were going to do, right? I don't know. You had yeah, them yeah, really yeah. excited them yeah. because they started like grunting and making yeah. noise and laughing and they were like... Yeah, and it turns out I, I didn't realize, I thought deaf people would just be quiet or mute people, right? But actually, they tend to make noises and, and grunt, and they show anger, and they show frustration, and they show also show laughter and yeah. fun. Well, I did not realize it, but when I'm working and I get something to go, that I make little sounds like, hmm, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't even realize I did it until these kids started mimicking me yeah, on they it. Did. And they, they, they could do that. exaggerated, yeah. So it turned out I knew that I... So here we are. We're setting up more teams. They're making how we're getting more bigger and bigger. Yep. How would They're you notice the smiles it. on all these people in the back? They, They're not posing for these pictures. This is another day in their life for them. But we, there was not 55-gallon drum is not safe in the Philippines no. now that aquaponics has come That's in. That's right. We grab them and we re-rig them up. We cut them out. We make aquariums out of them. So we make all kinds of little home systems. So you can see when we took them from the drum up to the concrete tank, that was a step up. The next day, we replumbed all the 55-gallon drums. There's yeah. no way they were getting rid of it. I mean, they did like to grade up. You can see the concrete on the right, the plastic there on the left. And this is their classroom. They keep in mind, the average temperature was about 95 degrees. Yeah. And I told them, the next time I come, I'd like to come when it's cool. And they said, well, the Philippines <laughs> only have two seasons, yeah. hot and hotter. Okay? <laughs> but these people paid attention. They were into it. Now, there's the lady in yellow. She's signing for me and that explaining what I'm doing. But everything we did was hands-on. Yes. And you see the blue drum over in the right in the back? That was up on a stand and it would pressurize the water coming over to here. And this is, see how much clear pipe I have? You can't see it too much here, but that is clear pipe so the people could see the bubbles, they Action, could see the water. What's going on yep. in those pipes. Yep. And we had one little fellow, he was the smallest guy the whole bunch, and he turned out to be my best student. He followed you everywhere. Oh, man. He would I, not leave your I was side. a rock star. I was, He's in you know, one of these It was the first time I had a groupie, here. you know? Yeah. He, he yeah. was fantastic. We really he was. enjoyed him. And you know what? Yep. He's still there, Glenn. Yep. He's still with He's them. still there, still working with them. And one young man we worked with for, uh, I think it was uh, Leonard, that worked with them. And he was like a counselor Leonardo. for them. Leonardo. Leonardo. And Leonardo went over, this job was a step up to a big time job yeah. for you know, where he got, he, did. He, he went from the village job to the big job, yeah. doing the same thing, training, working with people and mm -hmm. challenged people. And so it was a real stepping stone for him. And that's really neat to, to affect somebody's life like that. Yes. You know? So we say many times we want to teach teachers, right? Mm -hmm. Not students. So here's that well. Now you see where they crank in it there? Well, you have to crank that thing about 15 times before you get the first drop of water. Then it's steady. Now, notice the natty went over there. She put a 90, put the pipe to the ground and going across so you could walk around. When they first did it, they just put it in the air. Well, yeah. that would not have lasted very long. And bucket, but now they go the over there. You crank this thing, and you start getting that two-inch pipe full of water. Mm -hmm. They fill it up in no time. And they were excited. You see the nursery bed behind us all screened in? I mean, there's a lot of water coming up in this thing, okay? They could really get that thing cranking. And those are called rope pumps. Very, very simple. The water was only about 20 feet down. Uh, that, I mean, if you open the lid, you could see it down there. And uh, they literally dig a hole in the ground. It fills up with the water, and you stick one of those contraptions. So they're doing raised bed gardening here. Now, this is called terra aquaponics. And that is another word for it down in Australia. They call it extended uh, aquaponics yeah. in that, different words for it. This, this. And what it means is instead of just growing your food in the aquaponic system, use the aquaponic water yeah. to water all the other plants. So they do it seven days a week. So 
they divide the garden into seven sections, and each section gets fish water one day a week. The rest mm -hmm. of the time, they get to get water, right? But to get the nutritious water, and what the multiplying effect, you see how sparse it is there? Well, when we went back four months later, oh, man. it was just yeah, so full. Part. It was really nice, wasn't it? Yeah. So they built these screened enclosures in that, and this is where they have their worms in there. They learned how to have oh, composting big worms. Time worms. Then. In fact, as we, when we drove from here, we went over the mountain to San Carlos, we stopped and three commercial worm farms had started business, and they sell this, and equivalent to us, and they sell a, uh, a what would be a 50 pound feed sack, they yeah. filled it full of worm cat. They sold it for $3 American. Yeah. But keep in mind, you work all day in the Philippines for $5 a day. Mm -hmm. A construction worker makes $8 to $10 a day. So having a worm farm where you can sell 20 bags a day for $3 a bag, that worked for everybody. We yes. even went to the dump, right, in San Carlos. Yes, and they were separating the food they waste. They separated the food waste, because like all over the world, when you go to the dump, they charge you more for the wet garbage than it is just for dump and dry household stuff, right? Yes. And so these two ladies put up a business enterprise modeled after the Cuban experience mm -hmm. where they built concrete trays four mm -hmm. feet wide, 75 feet long, and they were three feet deep with worms. Yes. And they were in business and doing well. That yes, was That was good all the and way making around. making the best fertilizer. So, yeah, it was really good fun. So here are these worm pits in there. So you see the... the the, the fence is to keep the people out, and the the screen is to keep the birds out. Yes. And bingo, in there they have the worms, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and out here, when they do it, so notice how they're covering up and they're keeping it moist. They really got into doing the biointensive gardening, right? Mm -hmm. And they are sharp. There's they're not slackers in any way, shape, or form. No, they're and not. Once they latch onto a concept, they take it and run. Yeah. You know? Uh, and this, and they know how to eat. Let me tell you they what. They feed us well. They, they, we, we eat well. I did not lose any weight on this trip at <laughs> all, you know, and that. But everything was And tasty. a lot of them is out of the garden. The, That's right. The Most of it was out of their farm, and, their yeah. chickens. We ate their food, and yeah. uh, that was really great. And uh, so here's the fish tank all up and running. They got signs So now everywhere. they got plants all over the growing plants are all over. over. They're planted out. Now look at, see the difference? This is like four months after this. See how much thicker the plants are in the yeah. beddings, mm -hmm. okay? They get so much more production. And of course, the girls don't have to lug around those five-gallon buckets of water no, ladling don't. them out all over the place, right? They sure and, don't. Uh, so it's, it was a really bonanza to be there. And uh, we started doing beds uh, low. We did a workshop with them where we taught them how to fold up the stiff plastic yeah. and put down the stakes. Yeah. And they folded up, and they took us out to a chicken farm, and two men, they had the chicken farm going, but they had the aquaponics next to it, and they had 10 rows, 4 feet wide, 100 mm -hmm. feet long, with plastic about oh, 6 inches high. Mm -hmm. They filled it up with volcanic rock and gravel, mm -hmm. and they put your bamboo stakes down, and it was great. Yeah. And so we went into the city of Manila, and Danny took me to one of the manufacturers in Consuelo yes. Foundation, funded putting to some make, tanks together, yeah. four foot wide, 20 foot long. We could beds. take two of those, the grow beds, roll them up. Yeah. We could make fish tanks. Pre so they, and what they do, they cut this plastic and they heat glue it together, mm -hmm. ultrasonic heat. They did. And so they sell it by the square foot. They don't care what shape it is. So I was able, you were there with me. Yeah. We sat down, we engineered it, yeah. and we went out to a, a refugee camp, a relocation camp, and we put in six tanks. 20 feet across and six feet deep. They sure did. That was, that was something else, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take a little break here, a little message for you. So Think Tech Hawaii, we'll be right back. anything <laughs> here Glenn and Natalie from Olamana Gardens we're back for you 
So we're down in the Philippines on this, yes. and that's so it'll be kind of neat. And we try to keep this to show you the farms that we've been to, yes. and that. And Actually, by, you help them, Glenn. You put the aquaponic systems in a community that works to make income for them because right. now they have food that they can offer people mm -hmm. to come and eat right they make lunches they yeah. make dinners it's like the story of taloi foundation yes. in manila they had 240 kids when we met them and they had about 200 yeah. kids coming in in the daytime but don't they couldn't stay and one of the things is the way you get kids to come to school is you feed them yeah okay that's pretty much it and so that limited the, the lack of food limited them and we watched the population and we went back uh, the next year they had 880 yeah, kids easy. because the food was so great same school with the, the uh, orphanage uh, mm -hmm. here this deaf school yeah. if you can feed them them come now what's really neat about this garden is right next to the entrance into their campus yeah. so the public can come there they can buy there mm -hmm. and the kids make money mm -hmm. right and they get a share of it. so we've got a couple of little short videos we like to show you here and uh, to show you them in action in action okay? Down. I just want to drop down that far. That's the height I need to get the air lift. You have the least I can go in my house. Way up. Yeah. And on the ground. So, yeah, way up and on the ground. We get everybody gets wet in our yeah. classes, okay? And you had another little video there? I think is so. this how they move yeah. the water? Yeah, yeah. So it's good fun. And, and this this rope crank. Now, you've got to be a dedicated person to stand there and do this. But notice he's cranking and cranking, and look at the other side. That is a steady stream of water coming out. Yeah. And he will stand there and crank that thing for an hour, hour oh, and yeah. a half Whatever to fill takes. that drum up. Yeah. You know? Nobody somebody, welches out. No. Nope. You know? And they might have yeah. somebody come over there and say, it's my turn. You oh. can't do everything by yourself, and they'll Th take that's over. Right. They'll take over. Yeah. yeah, nobody wants to get cheated out of their job. Yeah, yeah that, that's for sure. And that. Uh, and, uh, but it was really interesting to see them when we pumped the water up on the airlift to a higher elevation, put it in a 55 gallon drum, and then they hooked garden hoses to it and they were able to go out in the garden and just be able to put the pipe down, water the plant, 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 and everything went Jurassic Park. So they, they sure were did. happy with that. Great people. I think we've been there, what, three times now? Yeah, yeah, really good. So we're looking forward to going back. But Consuelo Foundation yeah. here in Hawaii has been extremely generous in sending mm -hmm. us over there. And Dr. Benny Ron from mm -hmm. University of Hawaii, he's over in Israel now. Yes, he is. And that. And uh, sad story, his mother up at about 94 or so, she passed heart. away, mm -hmm. you know, and that he'd been taking care of her for the yeah. last year. Tough job to have. Mm -hmm. But he's coming back to Austin, Texas, yeah. and we got our ATOL program. That's our aquaponic training, online learning. Yeah. And good news, it's now a, a accredited course in University of Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, University of Texas, I Nebraska. think Nebraska, um, um, and that so that ATOL, if you go up on the internet, you write ATOL, A-T-O-L-L, mm -hmm. it's Aquaponic Training Online Learning. Yeah. It started right here in Hawaii. Yes, it is. We used to do a show called Glenn and Ben and the Aquazin Show. Yeah. Okay, there's some <laughs> YouTube still out there on it. You can see it. And it was kind of cute because where we would go to places like going to the deaf school or that, many times we have a mixed bag. Now, the deaf school, they're all deaf students and deaf teachers, okay? You know, the people, counselors that work with them. But a lot of times when they brought us out to colleges, et cetera, we would have college students, we'd have local farmers, and we'd have PhDs in yeah. the class, right? And the standing it's running true. joke is they would introduce us. We'd all do our little dog and pony show, you know, what we're about and that. Yeah. And then they would excuse me to go outside on the lanai, you know, or an area yeah. where I could put my pumps together and mm -hmm. spray them and make water and that sort of stuff, right? And Dr. Benny would always say, Glenn and Natalie are going to go outside and they're going to show you how to build these things. We're going to turn them on. You'll see Make them pumping. Yeah. Now, for all of you that want to know how to build one, and want to go home with one. And Consuelo Foundation was extremely generous. They were. Some of these people came from like the forest department or the fishing department in groups of four or six people. They sent them home with an air compressor and the pump and the hoses. Mm -hmm. So then when they went back to their bosses, they could walk outside, set and it up, show it. and show it running. That's right. Otherwise, it's just another PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. It's gone, right? right. 
And so we do very little PowerPoint, very little, some drawing on a blackboard, yeah. but more and more, we just, it's Hands easier on. just to put it it's on. It's called hot. Hot. Hands-on training. And that's the same thing on the Big Island. When we came back in, the teachers, uh, it was on Thanksgiving break, and we stayed there for the two weeks. We volunteered. Every morning we came in about 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, they'd been there since 7 or 7.30. They had the blackboard full mm -hmm. of questions <laughs> that from the day before. Draw it out. Right? To what they... Drawn out. Yep. And I would have to sit there and decipher them and go, wow, we covered all of that? Wow. And they would say, but we have questions. Yeah. And I was trying try to explain it that, you know, it's not a static system. You got air building up, and then it's going to burst. The valve's going to open. The water's going to come in. The air pressure will come in. It's going to close this one. It's mm -hmm. going to build up too much. It's going to go over the hip. It's going to pump it up. That will open the valve. In time, I would say, you know what? Let's just build one. And so every morning every we built day. one. By yeah. noontime we built one. We went out to Every lunch, day. kind of patted ourselves on the back, job well yeah. done, well, let's head for the beach. <laughs> they were we would excited. come back and somebody said, I got a question. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be there at dark. Put you back, yeah. There we were. Put you we back said, in well. a training mode. So we go to dinner and we said, well, we're all done. We kind of pat ourselves on the back, got a very good productive day. And they say, wow, it's only eight o'clock. Home Depot's still open. Lowe's is still open. <laughs> Can we and go shopping? We would go shopping with them to buy material to for put the together next the next morning. Yeah. And that went on for 10 days yeah. before, before I made exciting. my escape. But yeah. uh, I'd yeah. still be there. Yeah. It was good fun. And that group is getting ready to go to Nepal. Yes, they are. Yeah. But I'm yeah. getting ready to go somewhere. Yes, Where am I going? Yes, you are. Glenn will be heading to uh, Montego Bay, Jamaica. 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 Yeah. There's going to be aquaponic in Jamaica yep. by Marvin. Yep. And um, he came to our farm. Yeah. This He's, young man got he, a USDA grant, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that funding him because he's building three commercial greenhouses mm -hmm. specifically to feed an orphan. Yes. And that's a soft spot with Natalie and I, yeah. is uh, orphanages, deaf schools, the kids or any, any kind any of a tough community. situation. And particularly where housing the kids, you have to feed them. Yeah. So what you have is you have the built-in labor force. You don't have to worry about selling the food. The kids are going to eat the food, yeah. right? And any surplus, it becomes a stipend to them. Yeah. You know, so it's a win-win situation. So we went down there last year, and we went to Jamaica, mm -hmm. and they've got the greenhouses up and that. Mm -hmm. All the material was trickling in. Yeah. We think we have problems here in Hawaii with shipping. Try Jamaica. Yeah. That is just a circus and a half, right? I think they have to go to Florida for yeah, things. Yeah, fl Florida, all over the mainland. And, and mainland, yeah. And the Jamaican fellow we're working with, uh, he looks Jamaican. He's bigger. He's bigger than me, and a big, beautiful man. And but he actually graduated, got his master's in business from Cambridge up in England. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's English, you know, uh, family, you might say. English Jamaican, so there's a big separation mm -hmm. there, you know, mm -hmm. um, and and there there there's a stratification there, you know, mm -hmm. from the local and then the English Jamaican, and that they're very well healed, and so he's very educated and that and well healed what he's doing, and and he was in the tourist business, made his money, and when we were there on our last trip with him, when we were building the greenhouses, uh, he took us out to visit, and he told me these stories about how he had gone into places that uh, were making local products like growing peppers, a yeah. pepper farm, and they made the chili water pepper, yeah. and he taught them how Value to added. merchandise it, mm -hmm. right? And he told me all these self what you call, uh, grandizing stories, you know, how good he did. Well, it turned out he took me for a tour. We went about eight or nine places, and all the stories were true. Yeah. They loved this guy. Yes, yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. And uh, so it was really fantastic. You know, are. normally when people talk in you know, about what they've done, you got to, yeah, you got a little salt, grain of salt there, right? It's something else when you go out in the community and all the doors open up. When we went down to see the mayor, the doors opened up, we breezed right in. So it's mm -hmm. neat to work for somebody who is so well respected in their community. Mm -hmm. And he was in the hotel industry and he made his money in the hotel industry, did good. But he's just kind of burned out on the tourism thing and it really wasn't making his people better. It's the same situation we have here in Hawaii the maids and all the people that work in the hotel, those are not the highest paying jobs, right? right? Being behind the desk or the janitorial services, all necessary for the tourist experience, but it's not a great windfall you know, to it. It's, they're not high tech jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, anyway, we'd like to thank you all so much for coming and joining us here at Think Tech Hawaii. 
Well, I guess we'll wrap it up here today, and next week we'll be packing up to head for Jamaica. Yep.